up since 8 o'clock, man. I'm running around. I'm tired as hell. All right, we're at the two minute. Welcome to the 2018 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Prep Classic, the 16th edition of this amazing event in Toronto. My name is Drew Banks from OnPointBasketball.com, alongside Elias Biet of NorthPoleHoops.com. How are you doing, Elias? I'm doing excellent, man. It's been a while since I've been on the air with you. Uh, it's always been good chemistry, so lo looking forward to another FHC Classic here. Oh, man, it's always good to be with you, man, and uh, what a tournament this has been so far. Uh, I think some changes in high school basketball, obviously going to a lot of prep schools now. Um, what are your keys? Obviously, the hosts, Father Henry Carr taking on Vaughn. They're familiar with each other uh, in the OSBA. What are your keys for uh, both teams' successes, and who should we watch out for for both teams? Well, I think one thing with, with Carr, we're, we're seeing a, a different physical makeup. You have multiple 6'3", 6'4", 6'7", 6'8", guys on the floor. They've never had this much versatility in terms of position. I think Marcus Harding, who's going to tip off here um, alongside R Ryan Brooks from Vaughn, Marcus Harding steps out and shoots the three, and he's at 6'8". You know, you guys, you got guys like Kobe Lamb who are dynamic, can play in transition and shoot in the half court. On the other side, for Vaughn, you got uh, Noah and Reggie, who are, who are going to be alternating, playing the point. Uh, these are both really tough teams, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a fight. All right, here we go, the breakdown from Elias. And here we go, Henry Carr wins the tip, and look at that, just like that. The man named Paul Menzies to the hoop. Is that going to be a key for them, getting out in transition? Yeah, I mean, I, I think they got to utilize their, their top skills and, and their speed. Uh, this is a, a team that plays really good help side defense, gets in the passing lane, so they're going to be able to get a lot of uh, open looks in the open court. And there you have it, Brooks going up, but he's fouled. That's 21, Harding. That's his first foul already. And with Ryan, I mean, he's a guy who, you know, he came off a 50-point uh, game early in the season. This is a guy that's being looked at by several Canadian universities at the U Sport level. Yeah, break it down. Who, who, a couple of names looking at Ryan. I mean, most most of the OUA, uh, which is a, the highest conference we can say in, in U Sports, I, I think Ryan's mindset is he's going to hold out before making a decision and wait for a low Division One program to get in the mix with him. I think the challenge that he faces is he, he's he got a football player's body, you know. Um, it's like LeBron out there. You, right? Um, and, and he's just starting to become a little more versatile and step out and shoot. If we could see that out of him, then he could play more of a power forward, small forward position at the next level. Shots up Harding, he wants to shoot that three. Vaughn with the rebound. I like point guard here, Dunn. 
I really like his game. Tyson, he's fearless. Oh, right to the hoop. Reggie Williams. Trent, and, and Reggie's obviously new to the Vaughn team. Trying to feel his way out, I think, for this team. I mean, he's he's a kid. He, he's got a really good personality. He's, uh, he's down to earth. He gets along with everybody in the community, really, because, you know, he, he was... He was doing a lot of camera work for these guys before saying, you know what, I'm going to pursue basketball. Um, so from a chemistry standpoint, first year of Vaughn, but he jumps in the mix and he's getting along with everybody right away. They enjoy playing with him because he's unselfish. And you mentioned, obviously, his camera work, MDP production. Uh, they're doing a great job here um, covering Canadian basketball from a highlight standpoint. And, it, it, you know, it shows the versatility of these young kids. They're very entrepreneurial from a young age. They're jumping into a business and also playing basketball. Back to the action right now. It's a 2-2 game. We are at the Father Ted McLean Gymnasium. Elias and I have been here... <laughs> Years upon years, I believe this is the ninth year we've been streaming, and we've all been here, a part of this event. And uh, you know, I think by the time the final comes around at 6:30, it's going to be standing room only. As always, as always. I mean, the sidelines, you know, it's tight space even down the the baseline. The refs are usually getting on everybody to move out the way, and the heat turns up in here. That's for sure. I'm feeling hot. I'm glad I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt today. I was thinking of wearing a jacket, but no, I said not this time. Here we go. Nice drive to the hoop. And that's a bucket. Nagamba with the left hand scoop underneath. Vaughn has a 5-4 lead. This is the 2018 FHC Prep Early Bird Classic. Nice pass. Latif picked off Menzies. Menzies, nice ball fake. I love his game. He is a special point guard. Can't get it to go. Here we go. Brooks thinks he's a point guard. This is off to Dunn. Oh, you got to make that play. You have to make that play. And Dunn is, a, is another guy, you know, he's dynamic skill set at the, at the guard position. Um, I thought he hesitated a little bit in, down the lane there. And that's a foul on uh, Nagamba. It's going to be his first. Coach Jamie talking to Caleb Johnson there. I like Caleb too, Elias. Uh, you know, look at the body. He got that prototypical small forward type of body right there. Yeah, we saw him three years ago at the, at the NPH Showcase when we did it in Halifax. And so he's originally from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Everybody's from Halifax these days. I post something on Instagram and I get tags. What? There's another Halifax player or a Nova Scotia kid player. There has been talent in the region on the East Coast for the longest time. The only difference is that they haven't had the same light that these guys have had in Toronto. Toronto's spoiled. So let's flat out say it. We're, we're spoiled with, you know, the amount of events they get, the exposure that they get, obviously the brands being from here. Um, but we want to make sure that, it, everything, that everyone who's doing something positive from a basketball standpoint in the basketball community is recognized nationally. That's, that's the biggest thing. There are kids in British Columbia, kids in New Brunswick even. I was there last weekend. There are some, some bona fide ballers that, can, that are going to play professionally and they're going to play at the, at the university level. It's great to see. Oh, the big dunk. And I'll tell you something right now. Mr. Calvin C.J. Lofters, if you weren't here to see it, folks, he had about six dunks uh, in, in, on day one. And he was my unsung hero. This kid can get up. At 6'6", he'll dunk everything in sight. Back to the action. Menzies off the dish from Harding. And it looks like Brooks is going to get that foul. Brooks got the foul on that play. It looks like a part of FHC's game plan is taking advantage of, the, of, of Brooks down low and, and continuing to attack him and getting him in foul trouble. I mean, if they can get him to three fouls before the half, I think it opens up the lane for them to really penetrate a lot more. I mean, look at the size of him. He takes up a lot of room in that paint. Uh, but they're attacking. Menzies gets the roll. It's 7-7. Seven, seven. 4.45 left first quarter. Drew Banks, Elias Biet. Thank you guys for tuning in as usual. Make sure you spread the link. It's, we've posted it on Twitter, at Drew Banks. Look for the tweet. Spread, out, spread that live stream link, please. Here we go. Latif, pressure by Menzies. That's the FHC defense. Oh, look at Latif. And at the last second, it looks like Johnson got him. 
It's going to be two fouls there. What do you think about that play? I mean, it looked like they had him dead to rights, and they kind of bailed him out with the foul. Yeah, I mean, you got to you got to stay disciplined. You got to hold your ground in those situations. I mean, it, it's a tight space down there. Uh, you want to force him into a tough shot and then live with that. At the free throw line, Latif, I like his game. He was kind of one of the guys that was in the background with the powerful Vaughn teams, and now he's the guy that stepped up to be one of the leaders, if not the leader on the team. I mean, he had himself a tremendous summer. Uh, I, you look at his body, you look at his, his base, uh, a lot thicker legs, thicker calves. Uh, he's built the, the, the physical strength to put himself in a position to at least look the part to be recruited. I'm looking at it from a recruitment angle. As you know, that's, what I, that's my specialty. I look at a kid like that, you know, 2019 class, packs on a lot of muscle, and can play either guard position, that's, that's a piece that I can utilize. And we saw Josh Morgan. I mean, look at the size of him. I know his dad, of course, uh, built. And look at the body on Morgan. He just went through and won to score that basket. FHC now leads 11-9. And Mor Morgan's physical presence, again, like, we talked about the, the physical makeup of, of this FHC team. You know, we, in previous years you had lineups with Carlo, Carlo Dubria, like just very tiny guys, but still found a way to get it done, mind you. But with, with this team here, just thicker, stronger, more athletic bodies. Yeah, you love to see it. I mean, what a job Coach Melnick has done to recruit these guys um, and bring them in town. It's good to see because they've kind of struggled uh, in the in the prep league. You know what I mean? They haven't had the size to go up against the Orangeville preps, the AIs, uh, you know. And now this is a team, I'll tell you, to be reckoned with uh, across the country, wherever they go. And I think even when they go to the States, they're going to be able to, uh, you know, perform well uh, down south. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the, the biggest change is I think there's a, there's a change in mentality too and standard. Uh, going from playing high school ball for so long to now being exposed to the prep scene and, and realizing the level of competition and now the recruiting and you got, you know, you got physical trainers involved. and Just think about the evolution. Think about where we were when we started doing FHC Early Bird 10 years ago to how our industry has evolved. Because before... I. I couldn't even call it an industry, so to speak. It was still in its infancy. Um, but I think FHC has done a, a tremendous job in staying with the times and, and being a leader in the, in the space. Yeah, it's incredible to see. And hopefully the rest of the teams across the country are going to look at them and take the cue. You know, you got to step up your game. I mean, there's opportunities for these kids to get free education. That's what it's about. Here's Dunn on the inbounds for Vaughn. Like I said, I like his play. He's crafty. He's got some speed. Look at that. Ryan Brooks playing point forward out there. Done. Gets it back. Look at a take. Oh, you got to finish that. CJ can't get it to go. Here comes Morgan. Menzies. Oh, Menzies doesn't want to pull up. Here's Morgan. Morgan, I, I, I'm telling you, I think he's going to have a breakout season. What a drive. Can't finish. I think Brooks was trying to take a charge there, and it's out of bounds. It'll go back. To the Voyagers, and as usual, Coach Melnick is on the sideline doing his thing. 13-9, his team's got the lead. I'm not sure when's the last time they were in the final, but I know FHC's ready. They want to be in this championship game uh, at 6.30 tonight, so they're going to do all they can to get the W here. Now, there's an assumption that, that Orangeville is going to move in and, and play in the final, and I don't think that... I don't think that we're ready to make that assumption. Um, you have Thornley, who's a you know a, a problem. Did you see their 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 dunk line last night? I mean, they're a serious problem. No, they got. I mean, I think they got. They'll maul you with their defense. They'll they'll be all over you, and that semifinal is going to be a battle of its own. And there's no telling what happens in this game. I mean, it's 13-11 for the home team here. Both games are going to go down to the wire, in my opinion. Yeah, they're definitely going to go to the wire, just like that last Constellation semifinal went down to the wire. Pine Ridge and Central Tech. I mean, you got to give props to Pine Ridge. My goodness. You know, it's hard to keep up as Lamb makes the free throw. It's hard to keep up with everybody going prep. They have still remained a high school team with a lot of gusto. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, Neckers, Biffin, and, and Cedric Carter, uh, 
they're just they're so invested in their guys they're with them throughout the summers too and i think that's the part that people don't see and and appreciate it's how much extra time before school after school that they spend with these squads ensuring that they're academically in line and and staying out of trouble uh, one of their best players and the most probably under the radar kid on the scene right now is Shaq Price. He's having himself a phenomenal start to the season, averaging over 25 a game and, and being the leader for his MVP squad. MVP at Pinky Lewis. MVP. And, and I think that, you know, as the season progresses, January comes around, we're going to be releasing another edition of the 2019 player rankings, and we're going to start to see him climb. Uh, because I think he's, we, we always go by game speaks, and his game is doing that. He's proven that he's one of the top point guards on the scene right now in Toronto. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he just needs to obviously get a little stronger. He's still young. That's going to happen. But all the intangibles, the competition level, he's got it. Back to the action. Juan struggling right now. They're down six. Henry Carr, look at that. I'll tell you, Morgan physically imposing down there. But you know what? Get back on D, young man. You got it. And Vaughn looks a little bit frazzled. And another turnover. Look at that. Henry Carr, just like that, has an eight-point lead up 19-11. What are they doing right right now, and what does Vaughn need to do to, to get back in this game, E? I think they're keeping good pressure on, on them full court, whether it's off of a make or a miss. They're, they're staying in line with them, and they're not allowing any easy possessions up the floor. Okay, look at this matchup. This is a big matchup. Look at it, Harding with the turnaround. What good defense by Ryan Brooks right there. Here comes Reggie Williams. Reggie, crafty point guard. Oh, and that's that might be his second. That might be Caleb's second foul, if I'm not mistaken. And he's going to have to get a sub here. Cameron David, number 14. Yep, and that's got to be two right there on Johnson and that's a big 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 gap there to fill as he's got the length here we go Vaughn with the inbounds done over to Williams you know I think I'm looking for Reggie Williams to kind of break out at some point oh done was that a pass oh and there he is Johnny on the spot CJ gets it to go watch this guy number 24 exciting yeah, I was very confused on that play as well, but it definitely looked like it was intended to be a pass. <laughs> oh, look at that Menzies. Where has he come from? I mean, he was obviously one of the guys in the shadows before, but really has stepped up. It's crazy what an offseason will do. He looks so poised and focused, and he's essentially one of the leaders on this team, both from a scoring angle and from leadership. Reggie Williams buries the three. Good to see. He's starting to find himself in this new squad. Look at Lamb on the kick out. Menzies, he wants it. He's confident in and out. There is Brooks. Brooks with the big rebound. Here comes Latif. Nice matchup there, Morgan. And Latif with the runner. What a play. De facto point guard right there. Morgan, here's Lamb, tries to cross over. They call it kick. Do you know a lot about Mr. Dunn, uh, uh, Tyson Dunn at all? What, what, what do you think about his game? This will be the first year that I'm seeing him in action, but from what we've seen early in the season, um, I mean, he's just, he gets it. He understands spacing. Uh, he understands angles, and that's why he's able to make those crafty passes like you saw on two possessions ago. He just has a high IQ for the game. Not necessarily super athletic, but just one of those guys who just knows how to get it done. And we watched him on Thursday also um, doing his thing, getting to the 10. Another foul on Vaughn. I think that was a bailout because number 14, David, had nowhere to go on that play. And at the last minute, the reach. You want to teach your players not to do that at the end. And he misses the first free throw. But Henry Carr lead now cut to three, 21-18. And he misses both. You got to get those free throws. Johnson with the rebound. Sorry, Lofters with the rebound. I keep calling him Calvin Johnson. I think in football here, but it's Calvin C.J. Lofters. Oh, that's off Brooks. That's got to be off Brooks right there. Vaughn very sloppy 
early on, he with 48.1 seconds left in the first quarter. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure from Henry Carr, and I think that that's what they want to do. This is a team that, a lot like like Central Tech, they like to speed you up when you're in the half court set. They don't want you to have a lot of time to make decisions. Oh man, I love this guy's game right here. Josh Morgan is going to be an X factor for this Father Henry Carr squad. They lead by six. Here, Lofter is going to the hoop. Stripped, but out of bounds off of Henry Carr. Damani Brown loses it out of bounds, and it goes back to the Vaughn Voyageurs. We thank you for tuning in. This is the first game of four today. I don't know if I'll have a voice left after calling four games. Here we go. Lofters, they lose it. Look at this matchup. Reggie loses it to Menzies, puts it up. Oh, what a roll! Menzies with the hoop against Reggie. He, he has a knack for, for just finishing on tough finishes, contorting his body midair. I, re I really like what he's done with himself, man. This, this offseason is probably one of the ones where I've seen the most progression from a, a large volume of players. Yeah, and, and I think they're taking things really seriously, which is great to see. I mean, they're not, you know, every year you don't develop is a year that you're going to be behind, right? you got to step up and keep up with the, with the Joneses, as they say. After, after one quarter, it's 26-20 uh, for Father Henry Carr. I think one of the biggest things this year is there's a realization of just how easy it is to get a scholarship if you're doing the right things. You know, you can say politics, you can say... Coach, coach is not putting in a good word. You can say all that you want, but when there's coaches in the stands and there's someone recruiting, number one, you don't know when somebody's in the stands. Number two, when when you're producing at a high level, people take notice. So I think this year kids are, are taking it upon themselves. They're saying, look, I didn't play good enough. That's why I don't have any scholarships. And it's scholarship season right now. Like it's it's never been easier for a Canadian prospect to pick up scholarships than it is right now in 2018. With the breakdown, Elias Biet, NorthPoleHoops.com, Drew Banks, OnPointBasketball.com. We want to shout out Ilmai's Media on production. Zane Williams getting the job done. Ninth year streaming it. Unbelievable here. The action is intense. And I tell you right now, the gym is probably about three quarters full. It will be standing room only in a couple hours uh, once the final comes around. And even the bronze medal game, Father Henry Carr leads 26-20. They're playing well right now. They probably should be up 10-12. They've let Vaughn come back into it. But you love to see the physicality of Henry Carr. And it looks like they have the defensive mojo and moxie back that they've had uh, in previous years. They are serious when it comes to defense. Vaughn with the inbounds. Latif takes it from Dawkins on the throw in. Let's see what Vaughn's running here. A little high screen action. Brooks and he wants the three. A little bit off there. Kind of an NBA set, bring out the big man. Nice take and a reverse. What a finish. Right there, Damani Brown. And Damani, class of 2021, has got a lot of time on his hands to really figure out what type of position he's going to be playing long term. Currently, I see him as a small forward, but really ain't no telling as you know he just continues to put it together. There's Reggie for another triple. Reggie Williams is feeling it. Big smile on his face. Happy for him. I know him personally. Good kid, as you said. Oh, what a steal. Morgan, come on, Brooks. you got to be more physical. This is a man's game. Look at that. Who can stop Mr. Morgan? Okay, but he's getting a little too, little too much now. You scored the bucket. Keep it simple. Just play the game. 30-23. FHC in control. Williams keeping the Vaughn Voyagers in it. This is a nice matchup right here. Jalen Menzies D'ing up Reggie Williams. And down low, we have number 13, Brown, guarding the big man, Brooks. This is Canadian high school basketball at its finest, folks. Oh, you can't touch that. You got to let that out of bounds. That's a mental mistake right there by number three on Vaughn, Autry Dawkins. Here we go on the inbounds. FHC's taking advantage of all the Vaughn miscues and capitalizing on turnovers. Now, Mr. Lamb has moved around a little bit in his career. Pulls up. No good. There's Dunn. Dunn with the rebound. Crafty. Oh, what a pass. A football pass. 
and Brooks goes up, and he's going to get taken down by Brown. I thought he did a good job of selling that because B Brown played it well. He was vertical, and he was moving in a backwards motion. So Brooks did a good job just really selling that to the referees. Yeah, he looked like he was kind of dead to rights there, but he still managed to, I think, you know, extend a bit and uh, draw that foul. He makes the first one. 30-24 is your score. This is the second quarter. First semifinal, the FHC Early Bird Prep Classic. And Brooks, the big man, showing. He's stepping up to the line, hitting two big free throws. Five-point game. Here's Morgan. Menzies, kick out. Brown. Oh, you got to go back door. That's a nice play. I see it. Oh, they turn it over, though. Here comes Latif. Oh, no, right down the middle. That's a bad pass right there. Here comes Morgan. Morgan relentless to the hoop. Oh, my, almost gets the scoop. Here's Brooks. Vaughn looking to push. Reggie, Dunn. Oh, Dunn with the spin? Oh, Dunn's got to make that. Nice play, though. He's got some excellent footwork. I mean, you see his hesitation move before that spin came. Defender had no idea it was coming. I like him. He's crafty, eh? Here we go, back to the action. Nice ball movement. They're so disciplined, Henry Carr. And you notice, too, Coach Melnick really has a group that understands the game. That's what I noticed the other day. There's not a lot of yelling, prodding, and you know what I mean? Going at them. They know what they have to do. Floater, no good. Latif has to step up right now. I mean, that's not a good shot. Get to the hoop. Do something strong. Oh, step. Oh, look at that play by Dunn. While falling, he strips the ball. I'm telling you, man, that's, that's a part of the IQ and feel for the game. We talked about his footwork. We talked about his craftiness. And now you're seeing that he can get it done defensively as well. Here we go. Back to the action. Oh, nice crossover. This kid is physical. He is relentless. For the full time that the game is on, Morgan will be attacking you. So you have to find a way, I think, on the other end to attack him and maybe reduce his effectiveness. But if you don't do that, he's, look where he's going to be. He's going to be at the charity stripe the whole game. And there's been a couple of possessions where he attacks with his, you know, with, with his shoulder down, head down a little bit. And that's your opportunity to set up the charge. That's your opportunity to get your feet in line to take a hit. But you've got to be willing to, to sacrifice your body to some degree. That might be painful <laughs> when a guy like that's there. A little bit of a bulldozer. <laughs> This first one's no good. We got a five-point lead. Henry Carr there, the home team. They're looking to get to the championship. They want to get there. Vaughn wants to step in their way and prevent it. Nice play. Second one is good. It's a six-point lead for Father Henry Carr. Kobe Lamb back into the game for the Crusaders. Latif. Nice matchup. It's some beautiful matchups out here. Lamb taking on Latif. You know, Williams and Menzies. Oh, look at this defense. Dawkins under pressure inside. A Atui. Caleb. No. With the floater. And he has a history, obviously. And we know family ties. Oh, Lamb. No. But then the finish is right there. Courage. Ogbiadi gets it to go. Action intense. Back. Nice kick out, Williams. Done. They needed that. But Latif with the boards. Nice pass. Oh, what a jump shot. The missing thing in basketball, that mid-range, Dawkins buries it. And, and one way that Vaughn's been able to put up a lot of clean shots is when they have their baseline drive to the drift to the corner, and then when they're penetrating off the top and kicking out, I think they, they just got to stick to getting clean shots off and not settling for the tough ones. Here's Dunn again. Tries to kick it, tipped out off Henry Carr. Action is intense. The referees, I hope you're in shape because you're running a track meet right now. 33-27, Father Henry Carr with the lead at home. First semifinal. Who will make it to the gold medal game to take on the winner of Thornley and Orangeville Prep? This is high-level Canadian basketball. Drew Ebanks alongside Elias Biet. Oh, in and out. Was that the big man with that? Oh, that looked like travel there. Here's Lamb. He's drive baseline. Tipped out. And that's going to be undone. You don't want to do that. Move your feet. And I think on that play, you use the baseline to your advantage instead of trying to reach there. Get them to step, get the, uh, your opponent to step out of bounds. 
for sure. And I mean, you, you got a, pr a post presence down there. You got Attaway down there, uh, brother of, of Matthew Attaway. He's, he's going to be a force for years to come. He's got a lot of time to develop. Very much. Look at that rebound, as you say, Attaway. Unbelievably high. He's a young, kind of raw player right now. Yeah, we're looking at the. He's a class of 2022, and in many ways, he's ahead of schedule of his older brother when they were at the same age. Shots up on the corner, no good. Oh, gang rebound by Father Henry Carr. Nice rebound. Courage right to the hole. Ogbiade. He's kind of an unsung hero for their, their squad. He's been around a little bit, kind of coming out of the shadows for Henry Carr. He is 6'4", 200. Look at his size, 2021. Still has some time. Attaway gets it tipped away. But then he gets the tip back. Look at that. Oh, Vaughn unfortunate on that play. Menzies on a kick. Shots up. Oh, that's a big shot right there. Gideon. Into a Mamic. Mamic gets it to go. And the parts are working seamlessly right now for Father Henry Carr. They lead 38 27. We'll take a quick break. You're listening to the Father Henry Carr Early Bird Prep Classic. Welcome back to the 2018 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Prep Classic. Drury Banks alongside Elias Biet. We have the first semifinal. The Vaughn Voyageurs trail Father Henry Carr 38-27. Out of bounds, it goes back to Vaughn Voyageurs, the referees say. They need that breakdown, 11 points so far, first half. It's been an intense game. The winner will go straight to the finals at 6.30. What a, not a good pass. Trying to get it inside to Brooks. Here's Lamb. Look at that, Lamb with the drive. Referee says clean. Ogbiade throws it up, no good. Brooks with the rebound. Here's the big man. Uh, Ogbiade with the foul right there. Kind of an unnecessary foul. You got a big man trying to play point guard. You really, and you're smaller than him. You don't really need a foul right there. No, I'm trying to beat him to the spot and try to pick his pocket on his way. Um, you know, although although Brooks is a little versatile, I don't trust him with the ball in his hands. So if you played him clean, you got an opportunity to get the strip. Oh, Vaughn, almost a five-second call right there. Shaky inbounds. That was Mateo Spencer Gomez. Here's Brooks right to the hoop. Nice pass. And he's got to throw that down. I mean, if that's me, I'm going to dunk that, but nice finish. That's a good recognition, seeing the man off the ball. And and good job by, I think that was Brown, right? Yep. Or no, Brown's not on the floor. That was uh, Spencer Gomez on the on the finish. Yes, on the finish. I, I think it was a good job coming in from the corner as he saw a double team coming into the lane. And you don't see a lot of that these days. Guys re recognizing the double teams there and then moving without the ball. Here he is, Spencer Gomez again. But then again, a loose dribble. No protection of the rock in the middle of the floor. There's Brooks, takes the charge. You could call that a mile away. Great play. And some guys, some bodies on the floor right there. And that is Johnson. And someone heard, looks like, uh, is that Lamb? That might be Lamb. What a smart play by Brooks, though, to step in and take that charge. 
he he takes at least two a game. So I mean, he wins two extra possessions for Vaughn every single game by taking a charge. And in a close game, that's a big thing, right? Two possessions could be six points if you make a three on the other end. Absolutely. Good to see Lamb back up. THI, the Health Institute in the building, taking care of all player needs. Dr. Joel Kerr, he's attentive as always to how players are doing. One of the best in the business. 38-29, the Vaughn Voyageurs right now, need they need to step up right here. They're down nine points. They need a break and to maybe go on a run. We'll see what happens. But Father Henry Carr playing incredibly tough right now at home in this first semifinal. Nice pass, and again, swing out. Nice pass, Williams. Don't want to play around with it too much. Up top, Latif. He's got to do something. He's got to look for his game. Here is Brooks. Brooks got to put it up. Too late. And again, Latif right there. Five, six seconds left. Shot clock. He's got to make something happen. He's looking for the big man. He has to be more aggressive. Yeah, I think he's been a little bit hesitant today to, to really get his offense going. Here we go. Back to Spencer Gomez. Right to the hoop. Oh, almost a travel call. Looked like steps. And that one's on Morgan. That should be his third, if I'm not mistaken. That's going to be a big foul right there. Not sure if uh, Henry Carr realizes it. But he's kind of in a little bit of foul trouble right now. Team fouls are three on Father Henry Carr and two on Vaughn. Spencer Gomez to the line. Spencer Gomez makes the first. Brown getting ready to check back in for Father Henry Carr. Shots up. That's good. Spencer Gomez. It's a 38-31 lead for Father Henry Carr. Little discussion about how many fouls Caleb Johnson has. I have him having three. Uh, apparently he may have four, but I think that they're going to have to do a correction on that. Shots up deep. Morgan, my goodness. Ice water in his veins. And no hesitation to pull. As soon as he catches, sees an open looks, knock it down. Got to love how he's come on this season. He's going to be a big part of what FHC Prep wants to do. Here's Brooks. Oh, nice play. Brooks, so physical down low. Uh, he's just too strong. I don't think there's anybody in this, this particular game that's going to be able to contain him. He might have a, 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 an issue with... Actually, no. There isn't really anybody with his, his width. The, the kid looks like a fridge out there. And another three. Morgan, he is playing lights out. Look at the defense. Ogbiade going, getting after it. Unfortunately, called for the foul. But that defense right now is impressive. Morgan, what can you say about him? <laughs> like, I mean, you mentioned it. Ice in his veins. He's the aggressor. He's, he's choosing the tempo for this team. And he's getting it done offensively. Here we go. Oh, nice turn, Brooks. <laughs> Just eating up Harding inside. And when you get your man that low in the paint, it's either going to be a bucket or a foul every time. That's one thing Brooks really executes well on. Morgan wants that shot. That's what you call a heat check, folks. He's trying to see how many he can get before this first half is over. 44-35 so far. This has been a great first semifinal. The second one coming up, Orangeville Prep taking on Thornley Prep. Two heavyweights going at it. Look at the defense. Ogbiade all over Williams in the corner. Brooks buries it. The big man showing his versatility. Talked about it earlier. This is why everyone considers him a U Sports special. And there's the buzzer, and at the half, Father Henry Carr, 44, the Vaughn Voyageurs, 38. You're watching the 2018 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Prep Classic from the Ted, Father Ted McLean Gymnasium. Stay tuned. We'll be back with the first half breakdown in a few moments.
Welcome back to the Father Henry Carr Early Bird Prep Classic, the 2018 edition. Shuri Banks alongside Elias Spiet. First half was very entertaining. The Von Voyageurs trail, though, by six. Father Henry Carr, the pull-up, no good. Cameron David will go to the line, and that'll be a foul on Noah Nagamba for the Voyageurs. Elias, quickly, your breakdown of the first half. What was Father Henry Carr doing right, and what does Vaughn need to do to get back in this game in the second half? I think it's still a game. I don't even think it's get back. We're only a six-point game. Uh, but what Father Henry Carr did do a, a really good job of is, is initiating and being the aggressor, uh, attacking the lane, you know, getting getting Vaughn in a little bit of foul trouble. They had him in the bonus. Um, and then their, their shot selection has been solid. On Vaughn's side, I think they, they need to put on, you know, put on a little more... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? A, a little more poise and aggression uh, on their attack. In the second, in the second quarter, Vaughn did a much better job of. Ooh, how about that? Brooks has really been the story here for Vaughn. Um, but they, this is the thing: they, it can't be Brooks on his own. They need more help outside of him. You yeah. said you mentioned Latif. Yeah, I want to see Latif step up. He, he it's his time. He's one of the guards that has to get it done for Vaughn. Step up, pull up. That's beautiful. That's like DeMar DeRozan, Cameron David with the pull-up J. We don't mention that name DeRozan here anymore. DeRozan's no longer in Toronto. He's a, he's a the, the mid-range king, though. You got to give him that. Not enough players are utilizing that area of the court. Definitely, definitely. And, and how about the, you know, you mentioned DeRozan. I know he's no longer with us right now, but how about the Raptors and how well they played Phoenix in the second half? I know Phoenix is a bottom feeder team, but they dominated. They did, and they're showing they're one of the best teams. Oh, my! After the bucket by Gamba, Morgan comes back. What a spin move right there for Morgan. This game is intense. Brooks turn around after the big dunk a couple minutes ago. You can see Brooks improving his vertical as well as this season has come on. Here's Morgan, not shy at all, in and out. Big rebound right there for Brooks. Loving the confidence that Morgan is playing with right now. Doesn't really see a shot that he doesn't like. And as, oh my goodness, Brooks again, just having his way. It's really Morgan versus Brooks here in FHC versus Vaughn. I want to see them two matched up. I know one's a guard, one's a center or a power forward, but my goodness, they're playing well. Look at this. Morgan taking on the whole team. Can't get it to finish. Latif with the rebound. See, and there's Latif again, not being aggressive. Brooks to the hole and one, folks. It looks like Wazir Latif is, is very confident in letting Ryan Brooks score a bunch of points. 50 to 46, a time. At the line now for Brooks. He can cut the lead to three. FHC, they're at home. They're looking to take this and get to the championship. So is Vaughn. They want to get there too. Brooks, no good on that second, that free throw that could have made it a traditional three-point play. Here's Morgan. Nice matchup, Latif. Harding, nice pass. Menzies, oh, almost gets the roll. What a pass by Harding. And Harding's one of those players. You look at him at 6'8". The next step for him is, is really developing his body and filling out the, his, his upper body, his shoulders, his chest. But skill level standpoint, I know we haven't got to see it a lot here because of you know Morgan's really going off. But he's a kid that could really step out and shoot to three at 6'8". Again, I, I noted a change in this Father Henry Carr team. They really have cerebral players. Not that they didn't have cerebral players before, but there's not a lot needs to be said. They know, and I've sensed this the last couple of days, they know what they need to do. There's no long talk, as they would say, for Coach Paul Melnick. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's, he's quieter than we've seen him before on the sidelines. He seems a lot calmer and just it, trusting in his guys, and that comes from, that comes from the practices. Yeah, most deaf. You can see what they can do in practice. Here's Williams. Nice pass, Reggie Williams with the tasty dish to Dunn for the finish. And Vaughn's feeling it right now. Almost a turnover. Great recovery, but he loses it. Menzies taking a little chances there. He's got to be under control. Here's the big man. Big man Brooks. Just like that, it's a one-point game. I'll tell you, if you're a scout, whether you're in Canada or the States, you have to look at a guy like Ryan Brooks, the size he has. 
the potential to shoot from the outside. Unbelievable. Well, he's, he's continuing to build his stock. Being able to shoot the three with consistency, you know, you saw it a little bit with Team Canada as well at the tryouts. I was at camp for all four days, and he was one of those guys that were, you know, last guy on the fence, tough decision to make. Um, you know, didn't end up making the team, but he showed in that tryout that he could be a valuable asset. And that's a turnover right there, but Teo Spencer Gomes, I mean, you can't afford that. Vaughn has to be aggressive when they're in the paint. Too many times they're getting into that paint area uncontested. And yeah, contested, but they still have to go up for it. Father Henry Carr taking advantage. They need a couple buckets here to separate themselves again. Here's Menzies up top, guarded by Williams. Some great matchups. Lamb to the hoop. Brooks, another charge. And Elias, I'll tell you, IQ, IQ, IQ. You got to see how many ways he's he's affecting the game. You've seen him attack in transition. You've seen him spot up and shoot the three. And you've seen him take his second charge of the game. He's finding multiple ways to jump into statistical categories. You love to see big men, you know, using not only their, their, their brawn but their brains. And a little bit of condensation after that last play. Remember to tune in to the live stream brought to you by Ill Minds Media, Drury Banks On Point Basketball, alongside my good friend. We've been in this business for a long time, Elias Biet. Love what you guys are doing at MPH. You guys continue to drive Canadian basketball. Uh, always love to work. And, you know, people always say, hey, there's competition on point and NPH. I say, no way. We, uh, we've been in this game too long. We respect uh, each other's progress, and we try to collaborate uh, as many times as we can throughout the season. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more this season as well. Good to be here with you, Elias. Absolutely, man. The pleasure's mine. I mean, you're an OG. You've been there from the get-go. Um, before before the north became cool you were there and we were there and you know let's just keep doing this let's keep building this thing together i love it man the journey and sometimes it's been tough we both have had convos and there's harding nice to see there's, we've had convos about the struggle but i think 2018 has been a big year for both our organizations in terms of what we want to do oh nice look there done back door and reggie almost had that break Coach Melnick saying, don't allow the reversal on defense. He's always preaching defense, and you got to love that because I always say, Elias, defense wins championships. Latif, there he is, wide open, 54-54. The Voyagers, I think it's the first tie since 0-0. Good time for Latif to show up because you can start to see that, that uh, Brooks is getting a little gas now. He needs a, li a little more help in the second half. And you imagine if they had, uh, you know, contributions from even more guys than Brooks and Latif and, and some of the other guys stepping up. You know, they could uh, they could really force the hand in this game. But we'll see what Henry Carr can do. Obviously, always pressuring on D. Nice hesitation. Oh, you see, that's a play where if Reggie needs to get to the next level, that's a play he's got to make. Morgan almost loses his balance. He has, he's like Cyclops. He has... Tunnel vision to the hole. He's just going to go right to the basket. Terrific change of direction on that one. I don't even know how he got to the other side of the basket. Here's oh, Brooks. Brooks with the slap. And you know what? He was having trouble with that play not too long ago. Right now, he's looked like... I don't know what he's doing to his vertical, but he's getting up with ease now. Are you, are you speaking on Brooks? Yeah. Or, or Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he has trimmed up a little bit. I think he can afford to do a little bit more. But he's, he's just become so effective because of how much he has to offer. And there is a great play by Kobe Lamb and one, and that foul is on Brooks. That's probably his second, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's his second foul. Lamb trying to put FHC up three, and he does. 59-56, it went from a tie game, and now FHC has the lead. What a game it has been so far. And we got another good one coming up, so make sure you don't go anywhere. Make sure you check out Drury Banks, and of course, uh, Elias underscore MPH, and check it out to know all what's going on. Oh, nice play, and Brooks is just carving out. We call that physical ball. That's some big diesel right there, man. Takes the contact, finishes through it. 
I love the kicks too. He's got the. It's uh, November now. Breast Cancer Month was October, but he's still representing uh, for the ladies. I love to see that. Look at that. Oh, no good. Second time though, he's missed that free throw. He's got to finish that. High-level Canadian basketball, it's increasing by the minute, by the hour, by the day, by the week, by the month, and year. People are looking at Canada and saying, what is going on? Especially the GTA. Look at Morgan. And where's the help on that play? You know what he wants to do, but of course, Brooks has two fouls. He's not going to step in there. Head down, straight line drive, lack of help side defense. It was much better in the first half for Father Henry Carr. Nice spin. Brooks a little out of control. Nice rebound. Henry Carr again imposing their will up three. Here's Morgan. You know what he wants. Morgan two physical kick out. Menzies. Oh, can't get it to go. But they get the rebound. Menzies wide open. They won't give it to him. Here he is in the corner, Brown. They're very disciplined. Oh, that was close. Here's Lamb. He got to shoot it. He gets his own rebound. Fade away, and he gets it. Gotta love him. From St. Mike's up to what, AI, and then back down to the city to FHC Prep, Kobe Lamb. He's found himself a home for senior season, and he's gotten a lot bouncier over this year. Here's Brooks again, easy what a catch. Easy bucket for Brooks. Dunn as well. Dunn's, Dunn, in my opinion, has been the X factor. They brought it back to a three-point game, and he's done a lot of things that are not gonna show up on the score sheet. And as you pointed out before, Dunn's footwork, not only on offense, but on defense. Footwork is such a big thing. Moving, shuffling, getting in front of the de defender. There he's a little weak on that path. Here's Menzies. Nice layup, left hand. Jalen Menzies gives it a five-point lead, 65-60. FHC with the lead. Vaughn got to, you know, clean up those unforced turnovers and unforced errors. Look at Dunn behind the back, through the legs with pressure. Brooks, quick setup. Oh, in and out. And the rebound right there, and he turns it away. Nope, here's Lamb. And you gotta see Lamb as well. You like the way Lamb has developed his body physically. Menzies! And he turns to the home crowd. Big, big three, 68-60. Jalen Menzies is some type of player, looking like an all-star in this tournament if not a possible MVP candidate. And we're one second away between shot clock and game clock winding down here in the third. This will be the last possession. Oh, not a good way to end the quarter for Vaughn. Out of bounds, off of Spencer Gomez. And you can't have that kind of play right now if you're the Vaughn Voyagers. We got eight seconds left in the third quarter. Let's see if Henry Carr can get this basket. My name is Drew E. Banks, onpointbasketball.com with alongside Elias Biet. NorthPoleHoops.com. And out of bounds, but a foul. Spencer Gomez. He's going to put Lamb on the line. He can give Father Henry Carr a 10 point lead. And it looked like Vaughn was going to use their momentum to take the lead, but no. Henry Carr shut the door. 69 60. Chance to make it 10 with 1.8 seconds left. We'll see if Vaughn can get a shot off to cut into the deficit to end the third. There it is. It's a 10 point lead. Here we go. The inbounds for the Voyagers. Here's Reggie Williams. Throws it up. Oh, no good on that one. After three quarters, 70 60. Father Henry Carr leads the Vaughn Voyagers. This is the 2018 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Prep Classic. Stay tuned. We'll be back in a few moments.
Welcome back to the 2018 Early Bird, Father Henry Carr Early Bird Prep Classic. After three quarters, Father Henry Carr leads 70-60. Elias, your breakdown, it looked like Vaughn was pulling right back into the game. And, and what did Father Henry Carr do to open up this 10-point bulge again? Well, there were multiple possessions where they forced them uh, to start the drive. They closed out hard on them on their shooting and forced a couple of uh, turnovers. You saw FHC finish in transition for some easy buckets. Really, the only life for Vaughn in this one has been Ryan Brooks, and I think he's the story of the game here. Uh, he's really evolved and molded his game, and you know, as, so as soon as he started to dominate in the paint, FHC dropped and started to double team. When they did that, he stepped out and shoot and started to shoot to three. But this is he cannot get it done on his own. He needs more production from the rest of the guys on the floor. Yeah, I mean, especially against this deep Father Henry Carr team, they just bring in bodies and they just continue to pressure. And the free throw is good. Noah Nagamba with that free throw. Here we go, 70-61. It's a nine point lead. Here's Morgan in the corner. He's got the ultimate green light. Oh, big tip back by Lamb. Lamb has some kind of vertical over there. And there's Vaughn, two men go towards Morgan because they know he's got that green light. The step up, no good on that shot. That was David, not a good shot by Cameron David. Yeah, no, if we're looking at shot selection, I mean, you're up 10. This is a chance to get into the championship of your own tournament. Every possession counts. This is not a time to be thinking of yourself. This is, this is you got to look for the best shot. You had Kobe Lamb out on the wing, ready to shoot it. And he's the one who got them the extra possession. Here's Vaughn, they need a basket, Reggie. Williams down low. CJ can't get it to go. You got to have a better effort than that, uh, Mr. Lofters. Down low, number 24. As I mentioned, Calvin Lofters had a tremendous game Thursday night for the Voyageurs, but right now the pressure of the Father Henry Carr Crusaders just a bit too much for him. Ryan Brooks back in the game. Dunn back in the game. Almost turned over. There's Latif on the pickup. Latif, got to be aggressive, Wazir, on the kick out. Oh, what a drive. Contact there, but Gamba, Nagamba, big bucket. Another guy physically imposing. Looked like he took some contact on it as well. The refs didn't call that one, but looked like the defender kind of just bounced right off him. Here we go, back to the action. Great ball movement. Here's Lamb, wide open, got to make that. And Brooks has to look to give it to the point guard sometimes. He almost got away with a travel. Here's Dunn. Dunn with the three. Just like that. It's a four-point game. 70-66. Dunn right now. I know Mr. Spiet is taking a look at him and going to have some good words to write about him in his report. Absolutely. I mean, I already got some notes on him. Just He's he's so composed and calm and, and effective. Uh, he, he's a plus on the floor. I'd love to figure out his efficiency rating because he looks like an absolute plus to me. And obviously, physically, he needs to mature, but mentally, and, and, and we said before, footwork-wise, uh, he gets it done. Now, Morgan at the line, that foul was on number one, uh, Nagamba for Vaughn. They lead by four, 626 left, fourth quarter. Drew Banks on pointbasketball.com alongside Elias Biet from NorthPoleHoops.com. Always good to be on the mic on the ones and twos. One and two, one and two. You're one, I'm two. I'm one, you're two. It doesn't matter. We're getting it done here. The Father Ted McLean Gymnasium. Speaking of ones, Josh Morgan at the line getting it done. This is a kid that dropped about 15 to 20 pounds over the course of the summer. And for, for anyone who's watched him last year, you know, you look at him and you're like, oh, th this kid's transformed his body entirely. He's transformed his game even, and the and the type of the type of possessions. Looks like we got some physicality going on. Good job by the referee stepping Wilson in. Tim Brown. Sure. Yep. Killer bees right there. Okay, back to the action. Here's Dunn, crafty point guard there for Vaughn. You know what? I love to see Chris passing, which is what I'm seeing right here. Crisp passing, two well-coached teams. Even on the rotation there, as the ball came across the perimeter, Brooks established his position early, Dunn with a with a shovel pass essentially into Brooks. I'm, I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing by Dunn, and I'm glad he has one more year. This offseason is going to be very important to him to develop physically as a 2020. 
and two esteemed coaches here, Gus Gymnopoulos, two-time offsa winner, Paul Melnick, one-time offsa winner, and several second place finishes for Father Henry Carr. So you know both teams are getting some quality coaching here. Two of the best in the business, two of the best in Canada. Here's Reggie Williams, nice play! And I think Reggie Williams is having that breakout performance for the Vaughn Voyagers. This is when they're gonna need him. Six minutes to go here, four point game. Courage Ogbiade getting ready to sub back in. And you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna put that up. No good on Morgan there. Ultimate green light. Here comes Dunn, the crafty Dunn on the kick out. Latif, oh in and out, and then big rebound Lamb. Here comes. Henry Carr back to it, full speed ahead, both teams. Nice crossover, Lamb, so smooth, but he can't get it to go. Brown with the rebound. Oh, what a play, bobbled it. What a fundamentally sound move on, that was like a mic and drill uh, times 10. He got Brooks to get off of his feet. Oh, foul call there, looked like it was a clean play, but it looks like Lamb's gonna get called. Might have got him on the wrist a little bit, but it looked clean to, to, to most of the gym. And Dunn right now, that left ankle, uh, looks like he rolled it. Dunn is feeling a little bit of pain. It's going to be key for him to still be able to play, but that's not going to feel good in about an hour after that, uh, that, leg, that ankle twist. Jim's starting to pack up. He misses the first free throw as Coach Belnick calls ball don't lie. 74-68, FHC with the lead. The winner will take on the winner of Orangeville Prep and Thorn Lee Prep. Done, second one is good. It is a five point lead, Father Henry Carr. 522 left, fourth quarter. The early bird prep classic. Streaming it for the ninth year. Shout out Ill Minds Media. Oh, Harding, can't get it to go, there's Dunn. Oh, what a play, why? Latif couldn't handle that pass. I mean, Dunn's been composed. That's probably the first play we've seen where he kind of got rattled there. And it might have to do with his ankle. He's still feeling it. And in the spacing on that possession in transition, the defender for Father Henry Carr there was still kind of feeling off of, of Latif. So I think Dunn could have held onto it for a second longer just to attract the defender towards him before the drop off. Amazing play, Morgan. And even to add what you're saying, what was the big rush there for Dunn? I mean, I know you want to get out, but if it's not there, pull back a little bit, slow it down, and organize. Yeah, I think he thought two on one in transition. Let's take care. Of, let's let's you know try to take advantage of this. And after the miss by Williams, it's still a seven point lead. Lamb and Dunn with him, great matchup. There's matchups all around. Nice Hezzy. Oh, the sidestep. Oh, Euro step. Kobe Lamb. Nine point lead. That was a beautiful play. Lamb getting it done. And I'm not sure what kind of looks he's getting, but very versatile guard right there can do it all. I think his shot, he's got to make sure he gets that shot automatic. But if he gets that, he can do it all. Get to the hoop at will. Yeah, I think he's a kid, you know, he's bounced around a little bit in terms of schools, so coaches are still trying to figure out where he moved even. Uh, but he did have a lot of uh, Division One interest that hasn't turned into offers yet. Um, it's about putting together a strong season. This is his final season uh, to really get it done as a 2019 prospect, 6'3 guard. I mean, there's, there's a lot to like about him. He's super bouncy. He can knock down the three. He can play a little bit of one and two. So, I mean, he, he's a combo guard that can play at the next level, no doubt. Good to see the level that they're playing uh, today. Uh, both teams are just going at it. Uh, the fans are being entertained here at the Father Ted McLean Gymnasium. This is the first semifinal. The second one coming right up. We will be sending you out the stream so you can retweet it. You can uh, share it on Instagram as well. FHC Early Bird, you can use that hashtag as well as MPH or Game, Game Speaks and On Point. Those are your hashtags, so spread the word, post your videos, post your pictures. We gotta continue to grow this Canadian basketball scene. 78-69, 426 left. Father Henry Carr in the driver's seat right now in their own tournament, looking to get to the championship game. The Vaughn Voyageurs stand in their way, 426 left. We'll see how it shakes out in this one. Here comes Latif. 
Guarded by Lamb. To Brooks. Turnover. Here's Lamb. A uh, pull up. He gets up high. Misses the rebound but flies in there. And it's off of Vaughn. And I think that was a great play by Kobe Lamb. Missed the shot. And he flew in there and got the tip off of the Vaughn Voyageurs. That's just the effort that you need. That's an extra possession just because of Kobe Lamb's effort. And FHC calling a timeout here. Vaughn Voyageurs behind, stuck nine. How are they going to turn this around and make this a game? I think they got to just really slow down the possessions and, and really take advantage of the shot clock. Um, utilize Brooks as much as possible in the paint. He's established position a couple times where the guards have kind of, not intentionally, but ignored him. Um, but he's, he's making himself a presence. Get it in. It's going to be an in and out game. As soon as he gets the touches and the defense collapses, kick back out. Look for those open looks. We got the foul situation, three on Father Henry Carr right now. Vaughn has a one. And this is a timeout here. Again, as we mentioned, it is the 2018 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Prep Classic. Drew Banks alongside Elias Viet. And we're going to be in the home stretch of this game after this timeout. It's great to see this level of basketball being played. I think the crowds are coming back to basketball we can see the last few events um, I know you guys are also involved in uh, next week's uh, Humber College Classic which has kind of undergone a re uh, shaping and a, a, you know kind of regroup of what they want to do there and that's great to see yeah so there's going to be a mix in the Humber Classic of high school teams in one division and the prep teams in another division and what I'm what I really like is that you're getting teams from both leagues competing uh, you have the, the NPA, the National Preparatory Association. Uh, that's a league of 13 teams comprised nationwide. And then you have the OSBA working out of Ontario. And this will be the first time in the season where we'll get to see those teams go at it early on. That's amazing. Great to see. It's going to be some high-level ball, both on the high school level and on the prep level. Here's the Vaughn Voyagers on the outside. Ryan Brooks. Oh, my goodness. That's a big man with a crossover and pull-up, Elias. And Marcus Harding's got to got to be better on defense. You got to have a handout on a guy like that. He's proven to make his threes. Don't disrespect him like that. Here's Harding. Had it. He's got to turn and take a look there. Morgan up top. Lamb. No foul there. Here comes Reggie Williams. Reggie's going to attack. Reggie got the ball stripped by Lamb. Here's Morgan. Three ten left. Fourth quarter. Down low. Oh, through the legs of Lamb. Through the arms and legs of Lamb. And here's Brooks, the point guard. <laughs> Brooks bringing it up. They don't even look for the point guard. Reggie, step back. Brooks! But it's a two. Again, it's the same thing. You're giving him way too much space to operate. In, and Brooks' confidence is at an all-time high. He's loving this. Subs are coming in for Father Henry Carr at the table as well as for Vaughn. 2.34 left. They're running a little clock right now. Oh, and almost a turnover by Brown. And he tries to force it. Why he was trying to force it there when you had time to kick it back out, I'm not sure. Here comes Latif. Right to the hoop. Misses Latif. Can't get it. Oh, there is the Johnny on the spot. Reggie Williams. And it has not been Latif's game in this one in the semifinal. If they somehow manage to get... To take out FHC, I mean, they're really going to need him to step out. Uh, so far, the momentum has been fully in Father Henry Carr's favor. And we saw Josh Morgan really lighting it up in the first half. Uh, Kobe here misses that one, but he's been an X factor in the second half. Defensive plays, tips for second chances. That foul right there is called on Dawkins of Vaughn. Uh, we got 14 on the shot clock right now. It's 80-75. Henry Carr with the five-point lead. Next up, as we mentioned, Orangeville Prep taking on Thor Lee. That's going to be a heavyweight, heavy, heavy, heavyweight battle. We can't wait for that one. Here's Morgan. Perpetual green light. There he is. PGL is my new nickname for him. He's showing it all, though. I mean, if you're a college coach, huh, 
as a guard with toughness that's willing to play defense. Here's Brooks. Brooks throws it up and rolls out. Morgan just getting it done all over the place. And Morgan's a two-way player, and those are the type of guys, you know, they're not liabilities on the team. They're, they're guys that, you know, you could depend on. They're guys where if you're not having a great offensive game, they're going to come out and at least be able to produce defensively for you and keep the energy up. Brooks at the line. It's a six-point game. He can make it five. Gets it to go. Five-point game, 83-78. Henry Carr with the lead. Here's Harding, nice pass. And Brooks fell asleep there. That foul's gonna be on Brooks. It's a six point lead. At the line, number 33, Caleb Johnson. 6'5", forward, 2021. And as you mentioned, he's got some time to really develop into a player. And he comes from a bloodline of, of basketball players. His older brother played NCAA ball, played pro. Um, he's headed down that direction. I know he's got a lot to learn still. Uh, gambled a little bit in the first half, got him into, in, into some foul trouble. But now he finds himself at the line. Free throw's good. It's an 84-77 game. 122 left. Father Henry Carr just has to hold on here. And they're going to book their ticket to the championship game. Latif, they need that. Latif! Big three, my goodness, just like that. It goes from seven to four. There's Menzies trying to pull it out. Morgan up top, Vaughn in the zone. Looks like a matchup zone for the Voyageurs. Morgan fakes the three. Lamb. Morgan, they wanted the three, kick ball. That's going to give them more time, though. 14 seconds put back on the shot clock. Time out on the floor called by the Vaughn Voyageurs. This one's going to go right down to the wire. Four-point lead right now. The Vaughn Voyageurs looking to cut into it. Henry Carr trying to hold on. They've kind of held this game in control for most of it. Yeah, I mean, and I think that this is a, this is a matter of discipline right now, and and trusting each other on the defensive end. Uh, you don't want to put, you don't want to give an opportunity for Vaughn to to get to the line, stop the clock, and make baskets there. You got to force them into tough shots, you know, with the time running. Tough shots. That's what's going to happen. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. This is the first semifinal of the 2018 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Prep Classic. <laughs> And back to the action. Father Henry Carr, they lead 84-80. This is the first semifinal of the Early Bird Prep Classic. On the wing, nice shot fake by Johnson. Beautiful kick out to Morgan. If he makes that, that right there could be the dagger. That's beautiful ball rotation. Great ball fake as well by Johnson. Morgan has been phenomenal in this one. I mean, offensively, he's come a really long way, playing super confident. And there is... Brooks can't make it done. This would be big. No good. Oh, what a rebound by Lamb. But his back. Oh, my. There it is, Johnson. And that's going to seal it. But it looks like Kobe Lamb's hurt. Okay, good to see him up. Good to see him up. Timeout on the floor. That right there might be the dagger. Father Henry Carr, they're going to the championship game, barring a miracle on the Vaughn side. Timeout called by the Vaughn Voyagers. 
We'll be right back with uh, the final minute of play. Stay tuned. And thanks for tuning in. We got 14.2 seconds left here. Henry Carr booking their ticket to the championship game. They lead 90-80 over Vaughn. Oh, nice defense. And here's Menzies. Menzies, 90-80, a 10-point game. And that's it. Henry Carr is off to the championship game with a 90-80 win over the Vaughn Voyagers. Breakdown, your breakdown, Elias. I mean, start to finish, Father Henry Carr, you got to give it up to them. Uh, Josh Morgan set the tone. He's got, he had himself near 40 points in this one. I'm interested in seeing this stat sheet. Um, but, you know, Vaughn's got to keep their head up. they got a solid team, very well coached. Ryan Brooks is, is, you know, one of their studs. He needed a little more help in this one. Uh, I think we'll see the best of them is yet to come in future games. There you have the breakdown. LSB at Drew Banks, On Point Basketball and North Pole Hoops. We're here with the call. 90-80, that was your first semifinal. Stay tuned. Orangeville Prep taking on Thornley Prep, and we'll have the breakdown of that one as well. All right, we're post-game here after a big 90-80 to 80 win. Father Henry Carr taking down the Vaughn Voyagers. Mr. Morgan, I'm just that's what I'm going to call you now. Uh, you just got it done today. 40 points. I'm sure you don't care about that. Um, talk about your mindset going into the game. Um, mindset, uh, protect home court. And uh, we're dogs on defense, so I just wanted to get that going through the team. And you've changed your body. You've changed your game, your mentality, as Elias pointed out. Uh, what has been this transformation for you? Um, working every day in the summer with uh, Travis and uh, with the team, you know, we're just getting better, more flexible, and uh, getting stronger. And where is the newfound confidence to, to put up as many shots as you have? And I'm, I'm noticing that on the closeout, you're not worried about the amount of space, the shots going up immediately. Where, where's the new confidence coming from? Um, just getting reps up and uh, being in the gym every day. And my teammates give me the, the green light and the confidence to put up shots. I'll tell you right now, I'm very impressed by this young man. And I pointed it out, and we pointed out in the broadcast, not only offensively, but defensively, getting after it. And young players out there, if you want to stay on the court, you got to play two ways. That's the only way. Your coach can't take you off the floor if you want to play defense like him. Absolutely, man. Hats off to you. You know, we'll be, we'll be keeping track of you from a recruitment angle as well. Championships up ahead against one of these guys. Are you guys going to be scouting during this game? Uh, most definitely. Uh, we know we have an idea who, but yeah, we're just, they're both in OSBA, so we got to scout them no matter what. So yeah. 
It'll be a tough game. All right, man. There you have Josh Morgan getting it done. 40 points. Unbelievable. My man, Elias B. at Drew Banks. We'll be back. The next one's coming up. Orangeville Prep taking on Thornley Prep. The 2018 Father Henry Carr Early Bird Prep Classic. <laughs>